think it's time to begin our service. Who's excited today? Yeah. Come on, I know y'all can do better than that. Who's excited today? Yeah. All right, let's stand and go before the Lord in prayer. Let's just invite him into our service this morning. Lord, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for a new day, Lord, a blessing us and hope and peace and goodness. God, I pray that you just continue to move, continue to bless, continue to heal. God, I pray that you just meet us now in our service. Lord, move and touch hearts and minds. Lord, move by your power. Move by your spirit, Lord, we pray. That you just continue to have your way in our hearts and minds. That we may live for you and serve you with all of our hearts. Lord, we praise you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. 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 Hey, let's grab a hymnal. Turn page 360 as the Reverend comes.
want to win, you have to fight. If you want to win in life, you got to fight every, every day. You may not be throwing punches and all that, but you're fighting. Amen. You fight to do the right thing. You got to fight to get in line. <laughs> every day is a fight, even in the house. I want that. I saw that first. Uh, I wanted it before. Uh, you were late. So you now you got tug of war between brothers and sisters and everybody else. And then mom and dad has to get involved. And they got to fight to separate you. <laughs> fighting for God, though, it's a, a fight worth fighting. Amen. Because in the end, the victory is going to be worth it all. Amen. Well, we're going to continue now. The service going to wait upon you. For this morning's offerings and tithes, we haven't yet paid. Oh, my bad. Excuse me. Um, we have a new brother with us. He just came in from um, Graham. His brother, Reverend Gadulis. Uh, he showed up. He's going to be with us. <laughs> say something. Say something for the Lord, brother. Um, God is good. God is faithful. Amen. Amen. I'm the son of the Lord, and I'm excited to be here to help uh, Pastor DeRay and uh, the builders work for God. Amen. 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 If you have trouble with this thing, just think, I could do this. Amen. <laughs> you got this thing. We do this. Let's go do this. Amen. <laughs> right now, we're going to ask. Who um, likes Pastor to help us receive <laughs> you? <laughs> you come up. Might as well get it. <laughs> Brother, would you pray for the gift and the giver? Thank you, Heavenly Father God, for this opportunity to give unto you. To, we pray that you bless the gift and the giver, that all these finances may go to increase your work here, oh God. Thank you for your goodness in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
fully faithful that God is always faithful to us. Yes, amen. When we mess up, sometimes you realize you mess up and feel a little ashamed to <laughs> ask God for forgiveness. But sometimes I think maybe he just looks at him like, just keep it over with. Even as a Christian sometimes, you make mistakes. You know, the devil is always watching and you try to stick a little pride in there and I don't see you messed up. Now look, you gotta go crawling back. But when you serve a God, you don't have to crawl to God, you just walk out boldly. Amen. 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 I messed up. Please forgive me. And it's done. Amen. Pastor, but right now pastor's gonna come and deliver the word. God bless you, sir. Amen. Amen. It's amazing. It's amazing how faithful God is to us. It's amazing that we can look. I can just look at my my short lifespan just to think of how many times that he's actually been there for me. Yeah. Throughout all the stupidity, really, all the dumb things I've done. But we know that he loves us and he cares. And it's and it should be an awesome thought that we have with us all, at all times. But today I'd like to, I'd like to, if I could find it, take your attention to the book of Judges. To the book of Judges. Chapter 16. And we'll be dealing with somebody who went through a lot. Who went through a lot and he did a lot of things that are not wholesome. We'll say that. And as we get into the message, you'll understand why. You'll understand why. But we, I just want y'all to know that we had a great time in Chicago. Amen. We had an awesome time in Chicago. It was a nice trip there. Um, we got to see some things, see the city, see the sights. We got to have church with a whole bunch of our friends and family from all over the country. I think there was pastors come from at least six different states to meet us there in Chicago just to have a great time and worship God and celebrate His goodness. So we had went there for... They call it a renovation, a renovation service. So they just got done doing some things to their church and making it look nice and up to date. And it was amazing. It was amazing just to see the love there, to see the joy. And I wish I could have came, really. But it was, it was over 250 miles, and it was on a regular two-day weekend. So I know it's kind of hard to get those passes put in, especially at a short time frame. Or maybe next time. We'd love to have you out there with us. Amen. Judges chapter 16, verses 18 through 20. That would be the Bible reading. And when Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called for the Lord of the Philistines, saying, Come up this, come up this once, for he had showed me all his heart. Then the Lord of the Philistines came up unto her, and brought money in their hand. And she made him sleep upon her knee. And she called for, them for a man. And she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head. And she began to afflict him. And his strength went from him. And she said, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep. And said, I will go out as other times before and shake myself, and he wist not, or that word there is, he knew not that the Lord was departed from him. That's, that's a scary feeling. That's a scary thought and a scary place to be, to know that you are no longer in the favor of God. I'm using that latter, latter portion of verse 20 as my text. And said, I will go out as other times before and shake myself. And he wist not that the Lord was departed from him. And with the help of the Holy Spirit this morning, I'll be preaching on a message titled, Playing with Fire. Playing with Fire. A reverend can do the circuit stand and pray for the message of messenger. Thank you, Lord God, for this time to hear from your word. Dear God, we pray that you bless Pastor Gray as he ministered that which you laid upon his heart. Let all our minds and our hearts be open unto that which you have, uh, that you 
Want to speak to us about, O oh God, that we may be drawn to you and drawn closer to you, O oh God. We give you all the glory and the praise in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. So this term, playing with fire, if you say somebody is playing with fire, they're not out there juggling fire brands and out there doing all kind of acrobatic things that we see. But it means that they're doing something dangerous that may result in great harm. Maybe to themselves, maybe to others, and it can cause many problems. It could cause many problems. We can see this not just here in the story of Samson, but we can see it in our lives, in the lives of men and women, as they begin to go on this journey of life. That they begin to play too close to the fire. They say, watch out now, you might get burned. You might get burned. People are like, ah, oh, man, I've, been, I've done this a long time. I've been doing this for many years. Nothing's happened. Nothing's happened. I've drunk drive many a time. Nothing's happened. All of these different things that people, that come across people's mind and in their heart, that they think, oh, no, it won't happen to me. It won't happen to me. I'm, I'm stronger than that. I'm better than that. I'm smarter than that. Sometimes they feel invincible. Sometimes they feel like they cannot be overtaken. It's as if they're trying to live two lives at once. It's like they're trying to tote, tote that line so close. That, that line between godliness and the world. It's as if they're going through this life not realizing or understanding the sincerity or the, the severeness of it all. But as we begin to look here at the story of this young man called Samson. We can see a few things here. The right at the beginning of chapter 13. The beginning of chapter 13 is where it all kicks off. It's where, actually, it's where he actually enters into the, story, the timeline in the children of Israel's uh, time frame there in the book of Judges. And from the very beginning, the Bible says he was, a, he was almost like a miracle child. He was a miracle child, you could say. Because this mom was barren. She couldn't have any children. She couldn't have any children. And one day God came down and spoke to her. He said, I understand you. I understand your situation. I know where you're at. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless you with a son. And, and he began to tell, him all, tell her all of these different things that would take place in this young man's life. And how even God would set him apart as something special. We can look there in chapter 13, verse 5. The angel said, For lo, thou shalt conceive. You will have a child, and bear a son, and no razor shall come on his head, and the child shall be a Nazarite. Unto God from the womb. From the very beginning. He, he wasn't even born yet. God already had a special plan set aside for his life. That Nazarite that the angel talks about is someone who took a vow of holiness. Someone who took a vow to abstain from wine and, and grape juice. That he wasn't going to cut his hair or his beard. And he was to avoid certain things. That this kid from his youth up was set aside for the use of God. So that way he could help the children of Israel to deliver them from their enemies. Because that was the last thing, one of the last things the angel told her. And he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hands of the Philistines. And that, he, that was their enemies. But it's just, it's amazing. It's amazing how God knows us from the very beginning. That God's not... God knows. God sees. From the, very, from the very time that little baby enters into that womb, that it becomes a living thing, and God knows that thing from the very beginning, whether it's a boy or girl, I call it a thing, you could call it an egg. I don't know. But God knows them, and even us, even us as well, as the Paul began to express in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 4, he said, according as he hath chosen us in him, before the foundation of the world. 
That he's already made this plan of salvation, made this way for us to be a part of him from the very beginning. That we should be holy, separate, separated from the world. Not trying to live like them and look like them and act like them. Separate, holy, and without blame before him. In love. In love. That we're to be a different group of people. The called out ones as we're called. Christians. Christ-like. And even in 2 Corinthians chapter 6. He says, come from among them and be ye separate, said the Lord. Come over here. Separate yourself. There should be, there should be that line of separation. There should be that line of separation to where what? They can look at your life and know there's something different. Man, there's something different about that guy. Sister Francine's not here. I'd love to use her in my illustrations. When I mean, she's out delivering mail, she has this good attitude and she's She's showing the love of God and the joy of God. And they're like, why is she so happy? She's out here in the heat delivering this mail. Same thing with us. As we go about our day, as we're in formation, as we're at work at the factory, no matter where we're at, no matter where we're at, people should know you're different. Wait, wait. They may not even go to church. They may not have even been raised in church, but they know Christians don't cuss. They know Christians don't drink and party and sleep around. Wait, I know Christians can do that. And you can see it, it's weird because they know. It's as if they have that understanding already. But he said here that God has called us and chosen us from the foundation of the world so that way we could be in him already. Making that plan of salvation for us. But the Bible says that as he began to grow, as this young man began to become of age, it says the spirit of the Lord began to stir, began to move in his life, and it was evident. It was evident, not just by the strength, and I can, everybody has a picture of Samson. They have a picture of Samson, and he looks like Arnold Schwarzenegger in his prime. This big old yoked guy, and he's just all rippling and full of muscles. I'm pretty sure that's not how Samson looked like. Because they're trying to figure out where is your strength come from. If this man was a bodybuilder, they were like, oh yeah, he goes to the gym every day, of course. Of course, that's where his strength comes from. But they didn't know that his strength came from God himself. It's the same thing in a Christian's life, that as we begin to walk, and as we begin to do our part, and as we begin to pray, and read, and set time aside, that we can have that same strength from God. Amen. That the same strength can be now in us. They're like, whoa, where does their strength come from? All of these things are coming at them, left and right, top and bottom. And guess what? They're cool as a cucumber, chilling, not even worried about it. Because the strength comes from God. That it's when man becomes to count on their own strength, that's when he becomes weak. Because now he's like, look at me and what I've done. And we'll get into all of that. We'll get into it all, how he began to, he began to tote that line and play with this fire <laughs> that most men get burned by. Serious. Serious, and I've seen it, and I've heard it, and I've read stories, and watched little videos, and there's a lot of men out there in this world. Women too. Y'all aren't exempt. Sin and lust have, they, they're trying to destroy everybody. Because that's the work of Satan. The work of Satan is to bring us down. It's to keep us down. To keep us with all of these things bogging our minds. And we can't even think straight. But it's through that power of God that's able to free us from all manner of sin and wickedness. But one of the things that he may have forgotten to do, that, I, right, that was right at the end of chapter 13 there in Judges, where he said that the Spirit of the Lord was with him and doing things with him. 14. Chapter 14. Whole different story. Whole different, whole different ball game. But I guess, I guess the, the warning for this message or the, the lesson that can be taken away from today is we have to keep our hearts, people. We have to keep our hearts with all diligence, with everything that's within us, because out of our hearts 
comes the issue of life. Out of our mouths and out of our minds and everything that goes on in our lives has everything to do with how we keep our house clean. How we keep ourselves. How we keep it. Great diligence had need be used in keeping our hearts pure. Since why? Why? Why is this so necessary for us? Jeremiah cried out the same thing. He said, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Who can know it? He had this cry, this, this, he was trying to understand it for himself as well. But, but the, the King Solomon wrote this, that we're to keep our heart with all diligence. We are to make sure that we're keeping a watchful eye on the things that come into our vessel, the things that go out of our vessel. We have to make sure we're doing the right thing. You can say all the right things when you're in church. You can say all the right things. Oh, Lord, you're so awesome and great. But how are you living when you hit, when you hit the streets? How are you living on Saturday nights when the pastor ain't around? Come on now. How are you living? It's a real question. It's a real struggle. But it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be a struggle where people begin to up and down and up and down in their walk with God and they're struggling to stay above water it doesn't have to be that way because even Paul was, was writing that there in Romans chapter 7 he said I, I don't know what to do I, I want to do this but I don't do I do something else that I'm not supposed to do and the things I'm not supposed to do and I'm trying to be right and, I, and I'm going off this way so who shall deliver me from the body of this death Romans chapter 8, he gives us a clear understanding that it's not of our own. It's not of our own will. It's not of our own strength, but it's through the Spirit of Almighty God. That it's through the Spirit of God that's able to come into our lives and change us and make us new. See, this man really, I don't think he fully understood that. I don't think he fully understood that God had a plan for him and he set him aside to do something great. But he wasn't watching was to keep his heart. So we have to be watchful in all avenues that nothing enters. And nothing, nothing evil comes out. Nothing evil enters, excuse me. We want things to enter, yes. But we want it to be the right thing. We want it to be what God wants it to be. How do we keep our hearts? How do we keep our hearts? Prayer. Reading. Really. Faith comes by hearing. We build up our faith by praying in the Holy Ghost. There's a whole lot of things we can do to keep our hearts with all diligence. Coming to church is another one. So forsake not the assembling of yourselves together, as the matter of some is. I love seeing y'all every, every week or every day. I, I, I'd love to see y'all every day. Hang out with y'all. Spend some time with y'all. Knowing that you're having wholesome fun, Doing it the right way. Not because I'm making you. Not because I'm, I'm going to come talk to your first time if you don't come to church. It's on you. This is your relationship with God. It all comes from a desire to want to be different. Right. However, however, <laughs> it's an interesting word. He grew up. And the desires of his flesh overtook him. The things of his, the things of his, Bodily nature, yeah, it's, it's, it's human nature to want to go off and do certain things. But if it's causing you to sin, why do it? If things of your flesh are causing you to disobey God, why do it? So this was the same God that the angel of the Lord said that he would do great things. He would begin to deliver Israel from their enemies. At that time, before he was born, they'd already been in bondage, I guess, to this group of people for 40 years because they disobeyed God and they, they were hard-hearted. I was like, you know what? All right, sure. That's what you want? Go okay. ahead. That's what you want? Go ahead. And it destroyed them. And it destroyed the children of Israel. And it's amazing. It's amazing. Here, even Paul begins to express the same kind of thought process. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27. 
He said, but I keep my body under subjection. Least that by any means when I have preached to others, when I have gone up here time and time again, week after week, and preached the gospel, and preached Jesus Christ, and salvation, and separation, and all of these things, that I myself should be rejected at the end. He said he has to. He had, man, this was a great man of God. Paul the apostle was a great man of God. And he even said he had to keep himself under subjection. He had to keep himself in the right frame of mind, in the right mindset, in his heart, with diligence. But then we see as he grew up and started to go, uh, uh, Samson, as he grew up and started to go a certain way, that he began to fall into the same trap over and over and over again. It was women for this guy. Women. He couldn't stay away from them. Because even as we get into this setting there in chapter 16, verse 1 says he, 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 he met a harlot and, and he knew her. Like it was just like, hey, come here, girl. What's up? We see that a lot. We see that a lot, even in the church house. The people come and they, they come to church and then they see something they like. They're like, hey, come here, girl. Like, nah, I'm, I'm here for God. I'm not here to find a husband. I'm not here to find a wife. I'm here to find Christ, to find some rest for myself. But it was right then and there where he began to fall into these same things. See, women may not be your downfall. Women may not be your downfall. What? Some, see, people, people, if God's not first in people's life, what is? Something is, it's their self. Well, I don't know, video games, the gym. What comes between you and God? Work? Now, we all got to work, I understand that. What, partying? Having fun? What? What's coming between you and God? That this man's problem was women. What's your problem? What's your problem? I'm not saying y'all, everyone has, all y'all have problems. I'm not saying that. But we have to answer these harsh questions and these straightforward questions in our minds and in our hearts. What's coming in between you and your relationship with God? For this man, there even in chapter 4 and chapter 5, it says that he fell in love. Oh, I love them. Oh my God, they're so nice. So he fell in love with the woman in the valley of, what was the valley called? Sorek. So right there in that valley, that valley was the, was the place that separated the land of Israel and the land of the enemy. That he was still in that valley, toting that line, playing with fire, playing with this fire that ended up burning him. Caused him, caused his destruction. He fell in love with a woman named Delilah. If you even look at her name, her name means to languish. That word languish means to suffer from being forced to remain in an unpleasant place. That's what Delilah means. And also, that, that name Delilah means to be oppressed. To, to be brought low. Names mean something today. <laughs> really? Now they believed that back in the Bible time frame. I still kind of believe that today as well. Now, now people make up names and they're all kind of weird. <laughs> they have no meaning. They're just sounds. You know. Throw the pots and pans down the stairs. What do we come up with? All right, that's what we're naming them. All of these different things. But even when, even, even when the angel of the Lord came to Mary... She said, his name shall be Emmanuel, for he shall save his people from their sins. Their names have meanings. And here, if Samson would have only taken the opportunity to see the red flags, to see all those things that were negative in what was going on there, it would have caused him a lot of heartache and a lot of problems. But he missed it because of that misty, that mistiness of love. I don't think it was love at all. I think it was lust. Amen. That lust came up in his eyes and in his heart. I needed, I wanted. Urgh. Off he went, chasing her. In that valley, 
that was between his own home and the enemy. Playing with that fire. Again, his issue was women. What's your issue? What causes you to play with fire? What causes you to tote the line? What causes you to try to step out of the kingdom of God into the temple of the devil? What draws you away in your walk with God? There was a lot of red flags here. We'll start here in verse 5. And the lords of the Philistines came unto her, talking about Delilah, and said unto her, Entice him, and see wherein his great strength lies, and by what means we may prevail against him. They came to her. That we may bind him to afflict him. Ooh, that wasn't it. What caused her to be enticed? He said, and we will give thee Every one of us. 1,100 pieces of silver. Money. Caused her to have this desire to want to go against the man of God. Wanted to go against the man of God. What if it's someone's career? They're chasing after this career. They're chasing after this money. And they're trying to get you. Or you're trying to get them. I don't know. But then here. Here verse 6. Elijah said unto Samson, Tell me, I pray thee, wherein thy great strength lieth. And she didn't hold no punches. She wasn't sugarcoat nothing. And wherewith thou mayest be bound to afflict thee. She's straight up with him. How can I bind you? How can we afflict you? Where's your strength lie? You know, he told her some story. You know, if you do this, if you do that, um, uh, my strength will go for me. She set this man up for failure. It's amazing. But he didn't even see it. He didn't even care to see it. Maybe he did see it. He didn't even care. Maybe she was bad, bro. She was probably bad. He was like, ooh, I just have to have her. I don't care about the red flags. It's okay. A lot of times that happens. That did not, I'm, not, I'm not just talking about uh, intimate relationship between a couple. This could be something other than that. It could be anything that pulls you away from the love of God. Anything that pulls you away from the family of God. Right. Amen. Anything. Because the devil will use anything and everything yes. to get you away. So he can destroy you. It says, so, so, so here, here's where she set him up, right? Verse 8, 16, verse 8. Then the lords of the Philistines brought up to her seven green uh, ropes, apparently. They're fresh, vines, and they're going to tie this man up, right? Which, if they hadn't been dried, she bound him with them. Now there were men lying in wait, abiding with her in the chamber. Now, they, they were in the room. <laughs> they were waiting for him to, to go to sleep and get tied up. I wonder if he saw that. I wonder if he saw all of these things taking place. The Philistines, and, and she said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he break the he break the wits as a thread of tow is broken when it is touched when it is touched the fire. It's like a piece of thread being touched by fire. You know that's gonna break. That's how that's how he just broke him off. He didn't care. It didn't bother him. He didn't mind. So his strength was not known. But she got upset. You lied to me. You made me look stupid. You don't love me. You don't love me. If you love me, you'd be doing this. If you love me, you'd tell me that. If you love me, they try to tug at those heartstrings. They try to tug at those heartstrings. And we can even see that one of the major red flags is somebody that tries to put a wedge between you and God. Whether if it's a, um, a relationship with a with somebody you're trying to get to know, whether if it's a relationship with your family members. Your work, your, your video games, your, your gym, your whatever, yourself. That's a red flag, my friends. We should see it. And the people, people are like, what red flag? I don't, I don't see any red flag. <laughs> Open your eyes, you dummy. It's right there in front of you. You can't see it. You can't see it. God has separated us to make us better for him. We 
can't even see the red flags. See, even, even my, as soon, listen, as soon as I decided to make a change for God, as soon as I decided, I moved out of Houston, I went up, to, I went up north to Ohio, I had people calling me and texting me, hey, what's up, man? Where you at? Let's get together. I got, I got some, I got some of that powder. What's up, man? Let's party. Like, no, I'm not even there. I'm not even around. It always happens that way. It always happens that way. When God wants to do a change in somebody's life, then everything else starts to come up. Starts to pop its ugly little head. Relationships of the past, people that are mean you no good, drugs and alcohol, parties that you've never been to, people that you don't even know. Hey, come, come hang out with us. Come hang out with us. Why am I going to hang out with you? I want, I want a better life. I want to save my money. I want to have health and be and not be hung over in formation in the morning. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. But people are often enticed by these things that they may have never had. Popularity. All of these whatever. Wanting to look cool, wanting to be accepted, whatever it may be. And they enter into these places of ill repute. And the devil works on them. It's just one drink. It's just one night. Just getting to know her. It's no big deal. What does that lead to? What does that lead to? Say, come, come on, come kick it with me. We ain't gonna do nothing crazy. We ain't doing nothing crazy. Nah, bro. I'm going to church. Come kick it with me. Come hang out with me in the house of God. Nah, people don't want to hear that. Yeah, what? Mm, you weird. <laughs> what? Because I don't want to destroy myself. And the Bible says that they that they look at us as if we're funny and weird, that we don't run to the same excess of riot that they do. That we don't do the same things they do. They, they look at you funny. And try to make you feel weird and, and try to make you feel like an outsider. Look, I don't care. I'm supposed to be an outsider. Outside of the world. Outside of sin. Outside of all those things that bring me down. Because I am a child of God. Amen. How many people make that stand in their own lives? No, I'm a child of God. We don't do that. Not a lot of people do that. <laughs> Another red flag is when somebody will not respect your boundaries. Hey, I'm putting this boundary here. Don't come past it. You're like, ah, 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 let me. And no means no, not try harder. Really. But what happens is they wear us down. They wear them down. They wear them down. They wear them down. What about the military press? Um, who, who knows how much an M4 weighs? How much is an M4 weigh? Right around there. I think empty, the, the M4 weighs about six pounds, six and a half pounds, give or take. Military press is easy in the beginning. You get that weapon over your head and you just you chill. I can do this for at least 10 minutes. 20 minutes? 30 minutes? That that weapon becomes heavier and heavier with each rotation of up and down. Same thing with the devil. That he uses the little things in your life to wear you down spiritually. Right? Yeah. Right. That he uses those little foxes that they say, and that's those little foxes that'll spoil the vine. The devil used them temptations. Oh, you, you may have said no this weekend. What about next weekend? How firm are you in your relationship with God? How resolved are you to get to heaven? People miss these red flags and boundaries. What about the red flag of when somebody Somebody doesn't care about their success. They're only thinking about themselves and what they can get. They don't think about your success. This woman here was only thinking about her pocketbook. She didn't care that this, he was a man of God. She didn't care. She was like, come tell me. Tell me all. As if she was going to keep it to herself. Lying little joker. <laughs> but the Bible says that an evil communication corrupts good manners. Yeah. Yeah. That again, it's that wearing down process. And I've seen it. I've seen it. That little drop of water come and hit that rock in the same spot over and over again. Cause that thing to erode. Cause it to crack and break. Now, I'm not talking about no little pebble that you find in the yard. I'm talking big rocks, big cliff sides of mountains. It's a constant. It's that constant. 
that gets people caught up. Again, they think it'll never happen to me. It'll never happen to me. I'm good. I'm good to go. This man didn't learn from his experiences. <laughs> this man did not learn from his experiences. Why are we so hard-headed as well? How many times are we going to have to come back to God, Lord, forgive me for the same thing over and over again? How many times until we say enough is enough? I'm done. Let me quit. Let me just give it all to you, Lord. Fully surrendering to the will of God. God didn't have to make Jesus Christ carry that cross and die for us. He did it willingly. He did it willingly. Same thing in our lives and in our hearts, that it has to come from a place of full surrender. It has to come from a place of full surrender. doesn't matter how many Sundays you come. No matter how many OOR events you come to. No matter how, Monday, how many Monday night dinners you come to. If that, if that full surrenderance isn't in there, you'll, you'll fall into the same trap. Every single week, every single day, when it rises, you fall. But that's not where we should stay at. We shouldn't stay beat down and burdened down by sin. That through the power of God, we are able to stand. Through the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, we are able to overcome. We don't have to stay down, my friends. We don't have to stay in this state of gloom and doom. Because at the end of it, he told her all of his heart. And it wind up costing him his life. That he ended up dying because of it all. That's what happens when lust comes into a heart and a mind and in a life that sin starts to come about. Temptation. Sin is conceived. And when sin is finished, it brings forth death. That's what happens. No matter who you are. It'll happen like that for everybody. So that's why the Bible says we have to resist the devil. Nah, that's not the first one. He says, submit yourselves unto God. Resist the devil and he will flee. And when we start resisting and the devil starts going away from us, he says, draw nigh to God and God will draw nigh to you. So it becomes a process to now, I'm going to submit to you, Lord. I'm going to resist the devil. Get away from me. He's going to go. That, and in that moment, I'm able to get closer to God. That's, that should be our desire. That should be our desire to want to be closer to the Lord Almighty. Then that, we'll just leave it there. We'll just leave it there. I have a little bit more, but I think you get the point. I think you get the. I think you understand where I'm coming from. But there's things in our lives that try to weigh us down, but we have to be strong. We have to be resolved and in our minds know, hey, I'm not looking at what's going on here. I'm not looking at next week. I'm not looking at next year. I'm not looking at the promotion board. I'm looking at heaven. I'm looking at my final, I'm looking at my final goal. Yeah, when you're doing your 12 mile, you're focusing right here one step at a time. One, one jog at a time, making sure you're water. But it's the end goal that you have in mind. Keeping that watch, keeping that clock. I need to make this under three hours. But you have this mentality now. You have a goal to push for. And you do it. And you do it. Most of y'all have been through aerosol school. You know what I'm talking about. You know what it means to persevere. You know what it means to keep going. Why not have the same mentality when getting to heaven? That I'm going to make it. I don't care what comes my way. I don't get away from me, devil. I'm going to heaven. Amen. Get me behind me, Satan. Yes. And he'll come and he'll rear his ugly head. And we do knock it down. Boom. He comes up again in the form of something else. Knock it down. Boom. And we continue to fight. Continue to jab. Continue to go on and on and on. You get knocked down, so what? Get up. You get knocked down again, get up, so what? Learn from your mistakes. Yes. If that straight right jab is coming at you, learn how to bob and weave. Learn how to duck. Learn how to do something. Quit getting knocked down by the same little trash over and over again. You got this. The Bible said, greater is he that's, with us, that's, that's within us than he that's in the world. He has no power over us as long as the Spirit of God's in us. Yes. But we have to resist the devil by submitting to God and he will flee. Amen. Amen. 
So this man ended up spiritually blind from his whole goal of helping Israel to be delivered from their enemy. Let's not lose sight of the end goal, guys. Ladies, we, I have somewhere to be. I have somewhere to be. This is, this is just like a rest stop for me. I'm just passing through. I'm just passing through. I'm, I'm, I'm headed up to heaven. Where I know there'll be peace. I know there'll be safety. How many want to go to heaven today? I do. And I want all of you to come with me. I'm trying, I, I can't take, I can't take any of my worldly possessions with me. That old gold Honda, if God calls me home, buy it, you can have that. You can have that, you can have this old crusty suit. You can have it all, have this, this tablet and this phone, you can have it all. <laughs> I'm going up yonder. Amen. Where it's so much better, so much more, so much peace. Not just up in heaven. The peace that we get from God is not just in heaven that we can have the peace of God today. If you don't know God, it's, it's Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Today is the perfect opportunity. Today is the perfect opportunity to make that relationship firm again. Today is the day of salvation. Don't harden your heart. Don't harden your heart. Don't shrug it off and laugh it off as if it's nothing. As if it means nothing. Because this is life and death, folks. This is life and death. As you bow your head, close your eyes in reference, in reference to the Lord, I have, a, I, have a, I have a question. What has you bound today? What's causing you to go astray? What's causing you heartache and problems? Give it to God. Give it to Christ. Give it over to Him. Say, Lord, I need your help. Lord, I need you. Come, save me. Make me new. As you find a place to pray in reverence to the Lord today, this altar here, this altar is available. Come. If you need salvation, come. If you're already saved, come anyway. There's a lot to thank God for. There's a lot to have in our walk with God. Don't be ashamed. We all need something. Did you find a place to pray? God bless you.
It's an awesome thing to know that you're in right standings with God. Yeah. Really. But like he said, that he got up to shake himself that one day, and didn't realize that the Lord was gone. Like I tell everybody, we have to maintain our spirituality. Amen. We have to. We take our car to get service. Maintain our vehicles. Guys, in the military, you maintain your weapons so that way when it's time to be used, you can use them. We maintain our walk with God so that way when it comes time for us to get to heaven, we will be ready. Yes. We got this. We do. I believe in you. God believes in you and he loves you. And he cares. Um, so, y'all already met Reverend Gadudas. I encourage y'all to come back tonight. He'll be preaching tonight. He'll be preaching. Come, support him. Be here, and uh, and uh, I'm excited about what, what God's getting ready to do tonight. Not just because he's preaching, but because God is God, and he always has something good for us. Amen. He always has a blessing for us. Yes. So, tonight, 7.30, right here. Or, come early. It's not a crime to come early. <laughs> it's not a sin to be here on time. It's not... So, 7.30, right here, and also, Tuesday Bible study. I encourage you to come on Tuesday Bible study. This week, we're getting into, drum roll, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Oh, nice. That is the next step in a new Christian's life. So, I encourage you to come and, and, and to understand and know why it is necessary, and what he himself is there to do in our lives. I believe that we all need it. I need it. I'm going I'm to have a good time studying it out so that way I can let y'all know. Tuesday, tonight. Don't forget tonight at 7 30. <laughs> Serious. I will come find you on Monday, maybe. <laughs> Reverend, Reverend Love Rock Circuit, close the prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for the word that came forth today. We pray, God, that each one has been enlightened. Pray, God, that things have been made clear to each and every mind. Pray, God, that all will continue to hold fast to what was learned here in this service this morning. And allow it, oh God, to guide them each and every day. And we'll give you all the thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.